welcome back to Apache Kafka series. Uh, in the previous video, we have talked about Apache Kafka topics and partitions and how are these topics uh, used or how are producers producing to the topics and how consumers, uh, Kafka consumers consume from uh, those topics. Uh, in this video, we are going to look into uh, Kafka broker and cluster. So uh, let's dive into it. Um, here, when we said broker uh, in Apache perspective, here it means a single node application that is being installed in your server. When you have a Kafka server application installed in a single node, that single node is called a broker. And this broker also has the ability to listen to producers or receive messages from producers and also serve consumers. Uh, the single node broker actually can be used only for testing purpose. Uh, it is not recommended in production environment. So in your production environment, it is recommended uh, or the recommended number of brokers uh, to use are three. That is, you will have like three servers, uh, each one with a single broker installed, and these brokers can connect to each other. So then when these brokers connect to each other, they form a cluster. So broker is just a single node and cluster is two or more nodes connected to each other of Kafka. So what are the benefits of having more than one broker? When you have more than one broker, uh, Apache Kafka uh, by default uh, elect a leader within these brokers. It elect a leader and the benefit or the responsibility of that, uh, this leader is like administrative purpose. The leader will uh, assign partitions to the brokers and also will monitor for any, let's say, broker failure and try to rebalance so that other brokers can continue where the failing or the failed broker stops uh, on its partition. Also, leader is called a controller. When this leader assigns partition to the brokers, the broker becomes the leader of that partition. So the broker becomes the leader of that partition and that partition leader will replicate that partition to other brokers. And those brokers will become the followers of that partition. So let's say, for example, uh, here in our design, we have uh, producers and we have consumers. And here we have our Kafka cluster, which is uh, three nodes or three brokers. These three brokers are connected to one another or they are connected and they form a cluster. And you can see we have a topic like T1. This is our topic. And in that topic, we have three partitions, partition 0, 1, and 2. So the leader will try to distribute the partitions to each broker. Let's say, for example, T, uh, uh, broker 1 will be the leader of partition 0, broker 2 will be the leader of partition 1, and broker 3 will be the leader of partition 2. Uh, broker 1 will try to replicate partition 0 that it's, it is leading to broker 2 and broker 3. Also, broker 2 will try to or will replicate partition 1 to broker 1 and broker 3. And then uh, broker 3 will replicate partition 2 to uh, broker 1 and broker 2. This way, each broker is having a copy of each other's partition. So in case of failure, then uh, Kafka or the leader the, or the, uh, the controller will rebalance and assign the failing Kafka partition to another broker or the, the failing broker's partition to another broker so that that broker can continue processing that partition and that broker will become the leader of that partition. Let's assume that uh, broker 3 is down. So now that broker 3 is the leader of partition 2, this partition 2, if let's say broker 1 is the cluster leader or is the cluster controller, then uh, broker 1 
will decide to assign partition 2 to itself or assign it to broker 2. If it assign it to broker 2, then broker 2 will be a leader of partition 1 and partition 2. And it will replicate uh, the two partition to broker 1. So this way, uh, Kafka ensure that uh, no messages or uh, uh, in case of any failure, still the Kafka cluster will continue operating. When a message is produced to Kafka uh, broker or to Kafka cluster, that message also has a retention period. Uh, and the retention period can either be in time interval or in file size. So you can configure this and you can also configure this on topic basis. Also Kafka replication, when you have more than one Kafka cluster, the replication is actually within only single cluster. So if you have more than one cluster, then there is no replication between the two cluster. But uh, you still have other tools that you can use to uh, replicate from one cluster to another. Uh, you can use, for example, a mirror maker. Uh, this is Apache Kafka also project. You can use it to, um, to replicate between your clusters and it will ensure that also uh, this cluster replicate with each other. So uh, what are the benefits of using uh, Apache Kafka? Uh, for example, uh, when you are using another, uh, let's say, uh, event-driven platform before, or maybe you are using another queuing system and you want to use uh, Apache Kafka, what are the benefits you get from it? Uh, one of the benefits you can get is uh, multiple producers. You can have different producers from written in different applications, let's say Python, Java, JavaScript, or Golang. And then these producers will all be able to connect to Kafka uh, topic and produce messages. Then another thing, you can also have multiple consumers. Uh, with these multiple consumers, uh, you can have more than one consumer group or a single consumer group with more than one consumer and they can all consume from a topic. So when you have more than one consumer, those consumer will, all the partitions in that topic will be distributed to the consumers. And then you also have scalability. Yes, scalability, as we said, you can have more than one producer and when a producer is down, it doesn't affect anything from the Kafka. From consumer perspective, if you have, let's say, more than one partition in a topic and you have more than one consumers, then Kafka will ensure that the partitions in that topic are being distributed so that each consumer can process or can, uh, can process a, at least minimum of single partition, depending on how how many partitions you have. If you have more than, uh, let's say you have five partitions and you have three consumers, then two consumer will be consuming uh, one one partition or one consumer will be consuming one partition and two consumers will be consuming uh, two two partition. But let's say you add two more uh, consumers to the topic, then now you have five partitions and you have five consumers. These partitions will be distributed to the consumer. So each consumer will be consuming only single partition. If let's say, for example, a consumer is down, then Kafka will rebalance and ensure that the partition that is being pro processed by that consumer is assigned to another consumer so that, that uh, the new consumer will continue processing that partition. And next, uh, also uh, of scalability if you have more than one uh, kafka broker or you have two kafka broker and you decided to add more then kafka will rebalance and also distribute the load including the new kafka brokers uh, next uh, you have durability uh, because each message that is produced to kafka that message is written to the file as you know by default kafka's uh, write uh, messages as commit log so these are actually persisted in your server or in your computer so and because each leader of a partition replicates that partition to other brokers 
then when the broker is down you already have another copy of that partition in the other brokers and the, uh, the only thing that remains the leader will rebalance and assign that partition to another broker so that that broker can be the leader of that partition and it will continue processing that partition so that way your message are durable uh, even if let's say you have five brokers and two brokers are down still so uh, kafka will continue processing them without any problem then next uh, we look into real world uh, example of uh, kafka for example user activity tracking system uh, or let's say you have a social media application that people are logging you doing some activities and you want to track some part of the application and see how much it is being used by your client or by user so each and every click or use of that part of the application can be uh, produced to kafka and kafka will uh, also serve the consumer of that activity with the message and we also have application messaging you want to send an application message or you want to send a detail or object from one application to another also kafka can be used to achieve this and then you also have like real-time data processing if you have let's say real-time messaging system real-time like a bulk sms application or uh, user activity tracking system or maybe like a iot of a thing uh, so internet of a thing you can use kafka to uh, uh, to produce message and then consume that message through kafka these are some of the real world uses of kafka and in production environment or in application in the uh, industries uh, next we are going to look into how to install apache kafka or the practical uh, uses of apache kafka how to install it how to install other tools like a zookeeper and how to configure them and then how to produce message to apache kafka and how to consume that message uh, until then i hope this will also benefit someone out there uh, thank you